again, my friends. This is Kanita. I guess perhaps I should say hello for the first time. There we are. I'm trying to get all of this sorted up up here. I hope that uh, everything is going well. I can't really try and listen to myself too much when I'm doing this because I get confused. Well, as we open, I guess the first thing I should do is uh, greet all of you who are listening to me for the first time. My name is Kanita. I'm called Kanita Online. Uh, other than that, my name is Charles. You could call me that. You can call me almost anything. Uh, for the past couple of years, I've been podcasting on Podomatic, and uh, I have blogs in various places and have done several other things. And, uh, well, pr quite frankly, because the time the time is so short and the need is so great, uh, God has led me to try and expand what I do as much as I can around the schedule that I have, uh, going to new fields, speaking the same message. My intentions here on Blog Talk Radio are to do a morning show during the weekdays, a couple of days a week. It'll be an early show, something like six o'clock in the morning, because I have to go begin picking up my load around seven. Uh, I'd like to have the chat room open. Uh, whether I'll be able to actually get to it and do a lot of chatting while we're in the middle of, uh, of a discussion or, or a presentation, I don't know. We'll just have to see how that works out. Those of you who were here at the very beginning, notice the music, and most of you may already know that the music is provided by Zeph and Trish Daniel, and I do appreciate them so very much. This song is called Do You Get It? And as we proceed with the shows, that's really kind of the theme here is to make sure that everybody gets it. And along those lines, I want to start right at the very source, my friends, of where everything that we live for, everything that we are as believers comes from. In the book of Psalms, we read all my springs are in thee, O God. So the psalmist says, reckoning that the springs from which his dry soul is daily watered center in and flow out only from the living God. The springs of joy in the natural man, the people we run into, we see every day, their springs of joy lie in wealth power and pleasure but we are different the springs of joy the springs of life for a lamb all proceed from the living lamb of almighty god our risen christ god himself in the flesh christ my friends is our storehouse and the temple for all of our provision all our springs of refreshment all things are in him and from him all streams of light flow as the streams of a garden fountain are directed into many channels to water all parts of the garden and i have a large garden with a couple of ponds and i know the work that's required to take care of this well, in the same manner, my friends, so does the grace of God in our living Lord Christ Jesus gush forth from its unsearchable depths of love and mercy into the heart and mind of a believer. And this flowing grace, this rushing of the holy love of Almighty God restores life. It smashes and destroys the flesh and it sanctifies the affections weaning them from the vanities of earth and, and the defilement that these things bring to our lives it quickens my friends every grace and unites the whole of the believer into one supreme desire to glorify God this is why 
the word tells us to seek him often, to seek him daily, to walk with him continuously. Because the defilement of the world, the vanities of the world, are forever weighing upon us, crushing in upon us, eating away at us from the inside. And it is this constant flow, constant flow of the grace and the love and the mercies of Almighty God that unites us and brings us into one with Almighty God. <sighs> Trying to check a couple things here while I'm going on. I hope everything is coming out. If anybody has any problems hearing any of this, please let me know in the chat room because I can't hear anything. And it's very odd sensation for me to try and do this without getting any, any, uh, you know, I can't hear a thing. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'll have to let this grow on me as we go along. Well, anyway, not to interrupt what I was trying to say, my friends. The springs of that joy and peace that springs of hope that urge us on and sustain us in this pilgrimage, that keep us putting one foot in front of another and sometimes crawling, sometimes being carried. All are derived from our Lord. And the evidence that we see of these gifts, of the strength, of the mercies and the graces of our Lord. The evidences that we see of these things coming in our lives and filling us, encouraging us, strengthening us. The evidence of this hands-on love of God. As we see it, it encourages us and it fills us with a living hope. A living hope that, as Paul said, maketh not ashamed. For my friends, our risen Lord is also the fountain of the springs of eternal glory as well, from which flow all the waters of life, which fulfill all the promises of God, which will nurture and fulfill all the longings that he has placed within my heart. All my springs are in thee, said the man whom God said was a man after his own heart. And well should we, in our lives, re-echo these words. For you see all our springs, not only of pardon and of peace, acceptance and justification, but of contentment and of holiness, of wisdom and strength, of victory over the world and of death of the flesh, of all prayer and praise, and of every new budding forth of the soul, all these springs of life, my friends, all of them flow from our crucified Lord. Thus Christ crucified is to us who are saved the power of God itself, himself, and he is made unto us all things wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And all of these streams flow unto us as from a fountain unto the garden of our Lord's delight. And they flow to us from the highest point of God's love and mercy. And that highest point is the old rugged cross on the hill of Golgotha outside of Jerusalem. Here, my friends, is the fountain, the source, the headwaters of all living grace. It is the shed blood of the living God given to us from this holy hill, his holy hill, a stone of stumbling to many, but a promise and a fulfillment of life to those who are called and chosen of the God, of the living God. 
getting a little bit tongue twisted there. Hold on just a second here. You see, my friends, in our little meditation here on the Springs of Life, and I'm probably going faster than I should have. I see I have more time to fill than I probably know what to do with, but we'll work these out as we go along. But in these little meditations and on this issue of the Springs of Life, we must never, ever lose sight of the fact of the divinity of Christ, that the natural waters of life, though they flow, though they flow through the man Jesus, they also flow from and through the living God who indwelt him almost perfectly. The human nature of the Lord Jesus Christ had no existence whatsoever independent of his divine personality, independent of the life of the living God in the womb, in the manger, in the wilderness, on the Mount of Transfiguration, that night in the darkness of the Garden of Gethsemane, standing chained in Pilate's judgment hall, hanging nailed and bleeding to the cross. And even in the tomb, my friends, Jesus was still Emmanuel, God with us. And so indivisibly close and intimate is the conjunction of the human nature with the divine that the actings of each nature, though separable, cannot and must never be separated from each other. Thus we see it was the human hands of Jesus who broke the loaves and the fishes, but it was God who multiplied them so as to feed 4,000 men besides the women and children. It was the human Jesus who wept with Mary and Martha at the death of his beloved friend Lazarus. Yet it was Almighty God within him who raised Lazarus from the dead. The human feet of our Lord walked upon the Sea of Galilee. But it was the Son of God, the Son of the living God, who came across the waters to the ship that evening and who reached out and saved Peter when he put his eyes away from our Lord and out into the world around him. In the same way, my friends, as we cry out, Unto our Savior, unto the living God, it is the hand of God himself who reaches out unto us. It was the human lips of our Savior who uttered the words which are spirit and life. But it is the living God himself who give them, gives them their life and their power and makes them food and meat for us. It was the human hands of Jesus who were nailed to the cross. But the blood shed by them, my friends, was indeed the blood of Almighty God. And here, in the blood of Almighty God, my friends, is the source of all that is life, all that is joy, all that is strength and power for all believers. I don't know where any of you might be in your own personal walk tonight with our Lord. Uh, there we go. I just checked in. Thank you. Hearing me loud and clear. That's good. I feel a little bit better now. <laughs> I don't know where any of you might be in your life today as you walk with the living God. I understand the ups. I understand the downs. I understand the trials and the temptations. I have been there, my friends. There was a time when I was a rising star in a denomination, young and ambitious, full of vigor, but a little bit short on Almighty God. And he reached out and grabbed a hold of me. And in order to build what he wanted, he had to begin tearing down. And he certainly did. 
and he tore down everything, everything that I had relied upon, save him himself alone. And if this is where you're at sometime in your life, if your streams seem to have dried up, and you are driven to seek the truth, the truth begins here, my friends, at the blood of Almighty God. When all your created streams and cisterns are dried, and the fullness seems like a distant promise, something you once reached out for, something you once believed, but which has begun to trickle away because of inattention, because of inaction, or perhaps because of adverse action on your part. Understand, my friends, your cisterns may be empty, your streams may be dried, but the fountain remains. His fullness is ever the same. And if you are one of his, from whatever point you call, to that point, my friends, he will answer and he will lead you through these streams, these springs of life, to a point of renewal where you can once again latch on and follow him in the way. If you hear that distant voice from behind you, because you have turned off of the way, Turn again, my friends, the voice in the springs and the waters, the living waters will lead you to where you must go. Well, my friends, I think I'm about done for this day. I'll have to start reassessing how much I have to write down to last for half an hour. <laughs> Those of you who uh, are accustomed to my podcast understand that... Uh, a half hour for me is really kind of long time. It's almost like jail time. Gee, <laughs> I just never seem to get there. I do five minute, six minute, ten minute podcasts. When I actually was working within the church, I got to tell you, it was much the same then. Everybody loved my 15 minute sermons. I just, uh, I'm a quiet man. I don't have a lot to say. I speak when God gives me the unction. I've always been kind of stunned that he would call me to do this kind of this kind of work because I am so uncomfortable speaking around people because I'm always so conscious that I, that I don't particularly speak well. I have a tendency to stutter and stammer sometimes. Sometimes you'll hear long pauses in what I'm saying and that's, that's what's happened there. I've begun to stutter and stammer a little bit and I've learned if I just kind of shut up, it'll all go away. That's uh I don't know that my mom told me that that could be a good lesson for life, too. <laughs> well, in any case, my friends, it's been wonderful being with you. The chat room will remain open. Uh, and I will try and, and get closer to the half hour. Uh, my schedule is kind of fluid at this point. What I'm planning on doing this week is uh, a couple of early morning broadcasts, let's say perhaps Tuesday and Thursday at about six o'clock in the morning. And then it's Saturday, maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock, something like that on a Saturday morning. Uh, if I am able, I will get to where we can do one of these every morning, I think. I'm not sure exactly what the limits are on the uh, free side here and the free sides where I'm going to have to stay for a while. Uh, but I guess all of this will work its way out. Until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely wonderful day in our risen Lord.